Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 7 on Translations. Now translations are just like reflections and rotations. They're a particular type of transformation that occurs in the plane. All right, and in this lesson, we'll kind of be looking at them more generically. Make sure to have your tracing paper and your straight edge on you, okay? Um, in the next lesson, then, we'll look at a little bit at translations in the coordinate plane, all right? But today, we just want to kind of get a general idea of what a translation is um, and what properties translations have. You know, what special properties do they have? Are they rigid motions, like rotations and reflections are, or do they change the shape and size of the original figure? Anyway, let's start to answer those in the first exercise. Here we go. Now, before we can really get into how to do a translation, we have to introduce something called a vector. Now, vectors come up a ton in mathematics. I think they even come up in like some Despicable Me movies, you know. But, but, but vectors, right, are different things in different places of math and different areas of physics. So we're going to talk about what ty one type of vector in this context in math, but there are other types out there. Specifically, all we're thinking about a vector is it's a directed path from one point to another. It looks a lot like what you'd get if you mixed a array with a segment, okay? So it's got a direction like a ray has, but it's got a length like a segment has. So in exercise number one, it just asks us to draw the vectors for each of the following. And letter, letter A just says from A to B. So literally, the vector from A to B is this thing. That's it, okay? So you see what I mean by kind of like a combination of a ray and a segment. The starting point is A, the ending point is B, but then we draw an arrow in to specifically indicate that we're moving from A to B, right? Letter B, right? From D to C. Okay, this is pretty easy as well. This is literally this vector. And we should be doing this with a straight, you know, straight edge and things like that because vectors are straight line paths. Okay, they're not curvy or anything like that, no matter what this one might look like. All right, so now that you kind of have a general sense for what a vector is, and they're not very hard, let's move on and start to take a look at translations. All right, here we go. Exercise number two. Map segment EF to its image E prime F prime using a translation along the vector that maps point A to point B. Now, here's what we mean by that. What we literally mean is that we're going to take this segment and we're going to slide it, okay, the same distance from A to B and in the same direction from A to B. So I'm gonna explain how you can use tracing paper to do this. So letter A. Copy segment EF and the vector diagram on tracing paper include the dashed extension lines. All right, so you're going to want to take a piece of tracing paper right now and you're going to want to cover this entire diagram and you're going to want to trace this entire diagram. All right, little, little kind of note on translations. Okay, this is really, really helpful. You don't have to do this for the actual vector and the kind of extension lines. But draw EF both on the front side and the back side of the tracing paper, and I'll kind of explain why in just a moment. But take a minute to do that. All right, letter B asks us to slide point A along the vector until it is mapped to point B. Keep the line AB on top of itself. All right, so again, I want to move all points in the plane the same length and the same direction as vector AB. Now the way I do this, and you're going to do the same thing with your tracing paper, is I'm literally going to just slide this along until point A ends up lying on top of point B. All right? Now your EF, or really E prime F prime, should have shifted right along with it. Now what I'd like to do is just trace over this on the front or on the top side of my tracing paper. If I've drawn EF in pencil on the back side, then when I do something like this, right, and kind of trace it off, what will happen is that that 
will sort of just get traced onto my paper for me if I've drawn it on the back side of that tracing paper. And now I can put E prime, F prime. All right. Not maybe the most beautiful job because again, I, I'm not using a straight edge, but that is absolutely it, right? So I've got this thing here originally, or I'm trying to get it there originally, right? I now just slide this along because the whole point is that a vector is along a straight line path. Apparently that does not want to play the way I want it to. Thank goodness it worked the first time, right? I then trace this out and that's now my image of EF after a translation along the vector AB. All right, and we've already done letter C. Now, exercise number three. Exercise three asks us to draw vectors from the original points E and F to their images E prime F prime. What can you say about these compared to the vector pointing from A to B? All right, so in other words, I just want to do this. I really should, again, do it with a straight edge, but I am just going to draw those vectors in. All right. Now, what can I say about these two vectors compared to this vector? Well, I can say two things. What do you think they are? Pause the video now. Well, one thing we can say about these two vectors is that they're the same length as vector AB. And the other thing we can say about these two vectors is that they're also parallel to vector AB. So they are the same length and parallel to the vector from A to B. And that truly is the whole point. The whole point, the whole point of using a vector in order to think about a translation is to basically say, hey look, I want to take all the points along this line segment EF and I want to slide them a certain distance. How far is that distance? Oh, from A to B. And I want to slide them all in the same direction. And how do I think about direction? I think about direction in terms of parallelism, right? In terms of, well, look, if I, if I keep this thing parallel to this thing, then it's the same direction. If they were not parallel, they'd eventually intersect and then they'd be going in kind of different directions. All right. Final piece, exercise number four. If the four points E, F, E prime, F prime were connected to form a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is a four-sided figure as you know, what special type would it be? All right. Now we've, we've actually pretty much already done this, right? It said, well, if I connect E prime, F prime, F and E, right, what kind of a quadrilateral is this? Pause the video now and write down what kind you think it is. Well, it's not a rectangle or a square or anything like that. It's a parallelogram, all right? And always will be. It is a parallelogram. And it's a parallelogram because of a lot of different reasons that you're gonna study a lot more in high school. But the basic reason is that anytime you have a four-sided figure where two sides, let's talk about the sides E, E prime and F, F prime, if they're the same length, which they are because they're the same vector, and they're parallel to one another, then the overall figure is a parallelogram. All right, let's keep moving and talking more about translations. Translations are often called shifts, right, or slides, because all we're doing is just taking this thing and shifting it or sliding it a particular direction and a particular distance. Let's take a look at exercise three. Ah, or five. The diagram below shows line AB and a vector that maps point C to point D. Letter A, on the diagram, use tracing paper to translate line AB along the vector that maps C to D to form its image A prime B prime. All right, cool. So same thing. What I want you to do is take tracing paper, trace line AB, 
as well as points A and point B, right? Trace out this vector diagram along with the extension lines. Those are helpful just so that you can kind of like as you slide this thing, you can make sure to keep the line on top of itself. That keeps us all moving in the same direction, all right? Um, again, I would trace AB both on the front and the back side of your tracing paper. That just makes your life a little bit easier at the end of the day. And then shift the thing so that you can figure out where the image of line AB is going to end up going. All right, pause the video now and see if you can do that translation. All right, well, I've got it all kind of like pre-made here, so I can like just shift that thing along, right? What I would do at this point if I were you is I would mark off basically just where point A and B are. That's all you really need. You can then use your straight edge to do the rest. I'm gonna kind of trace right over it like that. And then I will kind of move this diagram out of the way. This is going to be A prime, and this is going to be B prime. Now, very, very important, letter B. What is the relationship between lines AB and A prime, B prime. So there, there's a special relationship between this line and this line. Visually speaking, what does it appear as the relationship between the two? Well, it appears, and this is true, that they're parallel to one another. So AB is parallel to a prime, B prime. A, B is parallel to A prime, B prime, all right? And that is actually quite remarkable, all right? It's one of the most remarkable things about translations. It's not true with a rotation or a reflection, but when you have a line and you translate it, then the image line is parallel to the original pre-image line. It's really kind of cool. And let's look at one last exercise where that kind of like shows up. Exercise number six. In the diagram below, triangle ABC is shown with point D. Use tracing paper to translate ABC along the vector that goes from A to D. Label the image as triangle DEF. Hint, first draw the vector on the diagram. So, Look, I like admit it up front. Okay, on your paper right now, you've got triangle ABC and you've got point D, and that's it, right? So I've got a little bit extra already drawn because I didn't want to have it all kind of magically showing up. So what I want you to do, start, take your straight edge out and connect point A to point D. That's the vector you're gonna be shifting all these things along, and then do a little extension so that when you actually do the shifting, you can kind of keep it all, all straight and parallel to one another. All right, once you've got that, then use your tracing paper to shift that triangle in the direction of vector AD, all right, and draw its image. Go ahead and do that. All right, let's do it. Let me get this thing out of the way. I think I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. Um, and all I need to do is shift this along until point A is at point D. I'm gonna just mark off where these two points should be, all right? And that's all I need. I can now, hopefully, I can now get rid of this, all right? That's going to be D, E, F. Again, much better to be doing this with an actual straight edge. Thought we'd save a little bit of time in the video there. There's triangle D, E, F, all right? Now, Letter B asks us to connect all original vertex points to their images using line segments, right? So I've already got A pretty much connected to D with a line segment, right? I can also connect C to E with a line segment and B to F. So th this one really is already connected, but let me, let me kind of make sure of it. Now, that, that was easy, that was just this part. It then asks, what is true about the lengths of all the segments you just drew? So what's true about the length of AD, CE, and BF? What's true about all of those? Well, 
they're all the same length, right? They are the same length. They must be the same length. That's the idea of a translation, right? We have literally shifted A to point D. We've shifted C to point E. And we've shifted B to point F. And all of those, right, have been shifted by a length of AD. By the length between point A and point D, that's how far we've shifted them. So all of those are the same length. Now finally, letter C, let me just bring this up and then we'll, we'll take a look at the diagram a little bit more. Letter C says, recall that parallelograms are quadrilaterals with two pairs of parallel sides. List all the parallelograms you see in your diagram. All right, and the way that you list a parallelogram is by basically listing off the letters of its vertices going either clockwise or counterclockwise. So, for example, one parallelogram is parallelogram A, D, E, C. So that is a parallelogram. And it's parallelogram because A, D, and C, E must be parallel due to the fact that they're both those translation vectors. And then D, E must be parallel to A, C because D, E is the image of A, C after a translation. And as we talked about in the previous exercise, when you translate a line or a line segment, its image is parallel to the pre-image. So A, D, E, C is a parallelogram. Whoops. A, D, E, C. There are two more parallelograms you can find in this picture. Why don't you go ahead and do so now? Pause the video. All right, well, another one that might be um, obvious, if I start at A and I go out to D and I go to F and then back to B, that's also a parallelogram. A, D, F, B, and then I guess back to A, right? So A, D, F, B. And the final parallelogram, maybe the hardest one to see, is if I start at C, I go at E to F to B. So almost what looks to be like this base of this like three-dimensional web wedge-like shape. So C, E, F, B is a parallelogram. All right, and that's it. You'd always see a lot of parallelograms going on in these kind of pictures, primarily because of all the parallelism that occurs, right? The vectors are parallel to each other, but so are the sides of the pre-image and the image, right? Those also end up being parallel. So a lot of parallelograms. Let's wrap this up. So kind of like a rotation, translations need some information. They need to know a vector, right? And the reason they need to know a vector is because the vector tells us how far we're supposed to shift or slide the object. And it also gives us the direction that we're supposed to move in it, right? And it does that by moving all the points of the image the same length as the vector and parallel to the vector. Now, translations have one really, really critical property. Besides being rigid motions, which they definitely are, um, translations also map lines or line segments into images that are parallel to the original pre-image. That's kind of a critical one about translations. All right, for now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.